Okay, this webinar is now being recorded. So we invited you to this session because you have an abacus reception key stage one subscription and you'll be starting to teach using the new early years foundation stage framework. So what we'll be covering today is a brief look at the new early years foundation stage framework for math. A look at why we broaden out from the early learning goals to use development matters in our matching documents for Abacus. How Abacus links to children's own experiences and also how Abacus prepares children for year one. Then I'll be doing a live walkthrough of Abacus reception on Active Learn Primary. We'll have a look at the professional development that we offer and there'll be a chance to ask more questions. So the new Early Years Foundation Stage Framework uh, contains the content that you would really expect for reception. So it's not so radically different to the old one. Uh, there is a, a bit more of a focus on number, uh, number facts um, and counting, um, but it also specifies that shapes, space and measures should be included um, in the introduction to the early learning goals. Alongside that, we also have a new version of the Development Matters document, which is the non-statutory guidance um, giving a suggested curriculum for early years. And this really has um, a broad coverage. So in Development Matters, it covers everything that we've already seen for the Early Years Foundation Stage Framework, plus more, um, including these things and time. So, I'm now going to hand over to Ruth to talk about um, why in our matching documents we've brought them out from the early learning goals to use development matters as well. Thanks, Eddie. Well, I think everybody, all of you like me, will know that actually in the classroom, um, if you're teaching in reception, you kind of know what you've got to do. You kind of know what you've got to teach. And it doesn't matter what stripe the politicians are, the what we've got to teach stays is, is, is kind of set. We've got to teach them to count. We've got to teach them to say the next number. We've got to teach them to subitize, to be able to recognize that there are three things on a plate. We've got to be able to teach them to order things. Pattern is important, etc. And so my view is that although the curriculum looks a bit different and there is a different feel factor to the pedagogy, and I definitely uh, think that's important, the actual mathematical content is not so very different at all. And having worked uh, you know, for over 45 years, an awful long time in schools, I, I think that one doesn't need to throw out any of one's own personal very good practice. You can just carry on with that. But it's definitely true that you have to find the um, statements in different places. And the statements are quite often not only in the EYFS, but they're also in the Development Matters. And the Development Matters is a very important document here. Um, one can't just think, oh no, I'm just going to use the EYFS. We have to use the Development Matters. So we found quite a lot of things. Ellie, is it possible to go back one slide? Yeah. We found, we found quite a lot of things in the Development Matters, which are not mentioned in the EYFS, like understanding one more, one less, and comparisons. Um, and patterns and sequences, et cetera, et cetera. And there's quite a lot of detail on some of these things, actually, um, not only in maths, but also in other things like patterns and sequences comes into other um, aspects of the curriculum, as indeed does shape and spatial awareness. So it's, it's, um, it's really good to include the development matters. And you're just fine. We've kind of done that for you. So, OK, Ellie, we can go back to the for forward again. So you can see that we've just put the, 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 the statements there. If you want to go and look them up, they're, 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 they're there. Okay. And it's also very important that we link to children's own experiences. I feel particularly passionately about this. I mean, dinosaurs may not be mentioned on the EYFS, but they're a part of every reception classroom because children come in clutching a plastic dinosaur and they know more about it than I do usually. And so they tell me it's there. I'm not going to ignore that. I'm not going to ignore space, even if it's not mentioned because a lot of children are really interested in space and they read whatever next and they, they want to know about rockets and the moon and so forth. And so we always in the reception 
especially, it should be true through the school, but in reception especially, we have always drawn on children's experience. And so some of the things that we have in the abacus reception materials are very much linked to children's experience. I mean, the obvious example is time because children do need to understand time and they need to understand that we can, you know, you can say in a minute, which is rarely just a minute, is it? Let's be honest. But we can say, you know, later on today, actually, if you watch the clock at three o'clock, that's when we have our play or that's when we end school. So seasons, especially at this moment, um, being in a nursery actually last week, we were doing lots with leaves. All these things are part of children's experience, of course, including money and coins and shopping. I know that a lot of that is now digital, but it's still important for children to understand the principle that shopping involves handing over cash. And that principle is probably easiest to see with actual coins rather than a digital, a digital card. So we do want to link to children's own experiences. And then finally, Eddie, if we can, thank you. Um, we also, of course, have a responsibility in reception to prepare children for year one. That's what we're there to do. And we want them to have the basis that they are um, absolutely ready for year one, because otherwise, you know, the whole thing falls apart. I mean, the, the maths coordinator will be wanting to make sure there is a smooth transition from reception to year one. A lot of people have commented um, uh, quite in quite uh, strong terms about the gap that now exists between the EYFS and the year one curriculum. The year one curriculum is very demanding. And so children really have to be able to do quite a lot of things. And you can't, you know, go from um, a sort of dumbed down reception. I'm not suggesting anybody would do that, but you can't go from a dumbed down reception into year one and expect children to survive that transition without some trauma. So we have to make sure that we're covering some things that may not be specifically mentioned, but that we know is, are necessary to prepare them for year one. So it's those three things really summarizing. First of all, actually the, the curriculum itself, the maths, in the reception curriculum is not so very different. And there's not a lot that you can actually do about that. That is what it is. Secondly, we always do draw on children's experiences and we should continue to do that. And thirdly, we want to prepare children for year one and make sure that that transition goes as well as possible. And that may mean we do a few things that aren't necessarily named on the curriculum. Thanks Ruth. So let's go from that to have a look at Active Learn Primary itself and just a quick uh, reminder of what's there for you in Abacus Reception. So I'll come out of my slides and go straight into Active Learn. So first log in to the platform. You've got single sign in to any services that your school subscribes to. So you can see here I've got tiles for all of our different subscriptions and depending which ones your school has, you may see, for example, Abacus, um, you know, Grammar and Spelling Bug or Bug Club. So let's go into Abacus. And what I'm going to show you today is a little bit in planning and resources for reception. So open up planning. And first of all, let's have a look at the reception area. So there's loads of useful stuff for you in here. You've got your reception mathematics policy, if you want to put that up on your school website, and a really useful overview document about number and calculation strategies in reception. And in addition to that, we've got these teacher videos all about how Abacus helps you teach these different aspects um, of the reception um, content, um, and also how we manage classroom management as well. So do take a look at those if you haven't already. And then you've got your correct so curriculum matching documents down here as well. Um, so the reception abacus to EYFS1, uh, we're just about to replace that with what uh, Ruth just showed with the uh, development matters in as well. Um, so this is an up-to-date document matching to the new uh, 2021 um, document. It just says 2020 because it was um, optional last year, so we put it, put it there last year. Um, but we're going to actually drop in the one with uh, development matters as well shortly. So look out for that later this week. Um, in the meantime, you can 
find that new uh, matching document, if you go into your places news messages, there's an abacus message here um, all about um, how abacus covers the framework and just click on that and that will take you um, to that matching document. Let's go back into abacus, into the planning. Okay, so I'm going to click on reception this time. Um, so you've got your yearly overview here uh, with your strands and weekly summaries. Sorry, oh, Ellie, could I just interrupt? Um, yeah. We've got a, quite a blurry screen. I'm just wondering if you turn your video off, if that might help. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, if, if it doesn't, what I've said to everyone is that we'll re-record a um, version of the walkthrough offline and share at the same time as the recording. So do just continue. Yeah. But okay. turning your video off might help. Yeah, let's try that then. Thank you. Um, all right. So hopefully you can see him well enough to see what I'm showing. But if not, yet yeah, we will follow up. Um, so that's the yearly overview, and I'm going to use the side menu to navigate so you can see where I'm going, and you've got all your medium term plans here. So within the autumn term, I'm going to go into week three to have a look at a typical weekly plan. So for reception, we provide these weekly plans because it gives you the flexibility to use the resources that we provide within the week as you wish. So you've got your strands and weekly objectives that are covered up here. And again, your weekly summary of what it's all about. And then the three types of resources provided here are carpet maths, whole class activities, and small group activities. So the carpet maths, as it suggests, um, is intended for children all starting out together on the carpet and you've got a, a starter activity. Um, and you can choose to use these in any order that you wish. Um, so they're nice and simple. Um, we specify which physical resources if any you need to do it. So this one's um, about having numbers pegged along a washing line um, and a glove puppet, which is uh, taking numbers off the line and then children need to spot which one is missing. So having done that, we've got the whole class activities. Uh, these are the only ones which are specified to be taught in a particular order uh, because there is a, a progression through them. So you've got them from numbers one to five. And again, you've got a standard structure to these. So you've got your main focus, any physical resources you need, and then a description of what to do. And then we provide anything you need um, digitally to deliver these. So for example, um, you do need number cards, then you can print those out from these resource sheets. And many of them also have a really nice digital screen. So you can put this up on the interactive whiteboard to do with the children. So this activity is all about conservation of number and dragging biscuits onto a plate, counting them together, and then moving the biscuits around, discussing and counting again, and agreeing that they're still the same number, even though they aren't in the same position. And guidance on how to use each of the screens is here in the teacher notes at the top. And you've also got your outcomes listed for this activity as well. Let's close that one up. And then the final type of activity is the small group activities. Um, and again, these can be done in any order you like. Um, there's a minimum of five for each week, but sometimes there's six or seven of these to choose from. And for these, we give guidance on whether they're best delivered by a teacher, which is T, um, whether they can be led by a teaching assistant, or we have some child initiated activities as well, which is C. So obviously these activities that children could do largely independently, such as this one, which is all about children um, being given a little box and then collecting small objects and estimating and counting the numbers of objects. And then at the bottom of our weekly plan, for assessment, we've got the outcomes that you're aiming to achieve and we've got all of the resources that have been linked out from the activities, both photocopables and the digital resources, so the teaching screens, and a list of all the physical resources needed for the week's teaching. And one thing just to point out under photocopables is that you've got these observation sheets. So if you or teaching assistant is observing an activity, then you can use this observation sheet um, to keep track of what children are doing. So that's the planning. So let's just come out of there. I'm going to go back home and into the abacus tile and have a quick look at resources. 
And again, if you're using Applicus regularly, you're probably really familiar with this screen. Um, this is all of the resources that you've seen linked out from the lessons, um, but all in one place so you can search as you wish. So depending on which Abacus subscriptions you have, you'll see year groups listed along here, so I'm going to tick reception. And then you can search for resources by um, the strand and objectives, or if, for example, you want an activity for play, um, then you can click on that and it will get results for that. Or if you know the name of the Abacus resource that you want to use, then there's Abacus resource list here. And I just wanted to show you something which you'll just find on the resource screen, which isn't actually linked from the lessons, which is the five minute fillers. So as the name suggests, um, these are really nice short activities which you can use at any point in the day. Um, if you have a little bit of time while children are lining up to go for lunch or into the playground, um, then you can just try out one of these short activities with them. Uh, very simple, they don't usually need any resources um, to use. And I'll just keep those number facts on the boil. Okay, so that's a little demo. Or, count, of, or counting, Ellie, or counting. Oh, um, yes. Lots yes, of different, even, even yeah. shape. I mean, lots of different little things. They're, fi they're literally mm. while you're queuing to go into the dining room or while you're sitting waiting for something to happen. Perfect, thank you. So that's just a little peek at uh, what there is in Abacus Reception. Um, if you'd like a more detailed walkthrough, then the customer success team um, can do a walkthrough specifically for you and, uh, and your school online. Um, so do get in touch with us after this um, and we can do that. So I'm just going to come out of Active M Primary and go back into my slides. So this is a reminder um, and some information about the professional development courses that we offer to help you. Um, so if you want to get the most out of your Abacus subscription or you have several new teachers, then we offer um, an Abacus course. So that's a full day, uh, which can be done on an inset day um, or two half days if that's easier to fit in. Um, and that goes into much more depth um, about the pedagogy of Abacus. Um, and as well as that, we are also offering um, an early years foundation stage course. Uh, so that covers all of the areas of learning and uh, not just maths. And that's a series of webinars webinars um, and there's separate sessions for reception teachers um, and teaching assistants as well. So do we have any questions? We don't have any questions um, at the moment. Um, okay. Please do use the Q&A box or the chat box if you have one. Uh, we do have a request on a similar webinar um, to use Abacus for years one, two, and three, um, basic concepts and how to introduce them. So that's something we can certainly look at. Thank you for that suggestion. Yeah, no, always great to have suggestions. If there's any um, sort of anything you really want to, to know about or to have a look at, um, then let us know. And we'll um, we've got that. a question from Catherine Young. Um, can I just ask if the planning for reception has changed at all this year from last year's planning? So the planning is the same, um, but we're, we've done those new matching documents with the links to the development matters, so you can see how um, everything's covered. Um, so everything I showed on the slides with the, the summary of what's in the, uh, the framework and development matters um, is covered in Abacus. Um, Ruth, did you want to say anything else? I was that? going to say the planning is the same because the planning was always quite flexible, but um, I wouldn't be myself using it in exactly the same way in that with the, the exploring and playing now, I would have a lot of focus on those child initiated activities because I think they, they've perhaps been a little bit ignored and now they come very much into their own. Um, and also with the um, thinking critically, I would also place an emphasis on the activities which are investigational, which are again highlighted. So it is the same, but I wouldn't use it in exactly the same way. I would be using it slightly differently. Um, because the flexibility is there, we didn't think it was necessary to change it. We just thought, actually, you can do it slightly differently because you're coping with the new curriculum. Um, we could send, we could put a letter out on, on that subject if people wanted. So if people are interested in that, we could put a short message out on, on that on that that because I've spoken to several people who are using it slightly differently from how they were using it before. They're using the same, probably just, it's just a question of which activities. There's so much in 
there's so much there you can't possibly do it all it's not even a it's not even an aspiration so therefore it's which bits you you choose I think that's the best way of putting it thanks Ruth and um, we have a question on does the EYFS course have a cost um, it does have a cost we'll share those in the um, follow-up information with you in the links on to how to book that as well have you got the cost to hand um, Ellie or um, yeah, no, sorry, I don't have that to hand, but I'm going to send, well, we are uh, going as a team send out um, emails to everyone who's attended and also everyone who's signed up and wasn't able to attend, um, and we'll put all the information in the email. Yeah, I've got a question of, will you ever introduce games to allocate for reception children? Um, we don't have any plans at the moment to do that in the short term, um, but please do keep in touch with us. We're always keen to hear from you guys. So keep feeding back to us if that's something that you you would like we'll take that on board and um, it might also be worthwhile you having a little look we'll pop some information about one of another of our products called school jam on the follow-up email as well and um, it isn't games to allocate but it's a really nice app that you can share with parents with lots of suggestions of what they can do at home with their reception children um, we've got a question on is it possible to send out an email when you add things to abacus e.g the eyfs matching documents um, we do send out emails on that front, Adrian. It may be that you're just not included on those lists. So what we'll make sure we do on the follow-up as well is put the opportunity to sign up for regular updates from us. We've got loads of messages now. Um, bah, 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 bah. Are courses offered free of charge virtually and when are they offered? Um, do you want me to pick that up, Ali? Uh, yeah, so yeah, I suppose we've got two things, haven't we? The, um special development courses and then we do do the free walkthroughs which are shorter um so yes yeah, so the professional development courses that i showed on the last slide and we'll send information on um they're they're the paid for courses and obviously they take time um to you know look at how you would use applicants in your school um and really go into the depth of pedagogy if you want um, more of a run through of what's there in active learn primary um so similar to the little walkthrough that i did um just now um, then we can do walkthroughs in the customer success team if you're a, a UK-based um, school, the customer success team support UK schools um, and your local reps can support, support you if you're an international school. Great. And we've got a question um, probably for you, Ruth, this one. Um, we find the jump to year one a huge challenge for the children. If the planning is the same, flexibility included, can you suggest what else will help this next year? I think the jump is huge. I don't think that's your fault or mine. I think it, that's to do with not joined up thinking at government level on the curriculum. Um, I think year one is actually way too hard, is my personal opinion. Um, and I was on the committee that produced the national curriculum, but please don't shoot the messenger because nothing that we recommended, and it was quite a, a, good, a good committee, was, um, was listened to. So it was Michael Gove at the time, and, and I'm afraid... Um, he had his own ideas, or maybe that's maybe that's good. But anyway, he had his own ideas. I think the year one curriculum is very demanding, and I, my my view would be that um, it, it stick the is the activities. The teaching's fine. The teaching will get you there on in the reception in the reception materials. But stick with the activities. Make sure you do the group activities assiduously because it's the group activities where the learning takes place really and so choose the more challenging group activities because those will then help to extend the children and get them thinking mathematically in the way we want to the other thing i would say is really really be assiduous about the regular carpet sessions those carpet sessions are very important um, they again they lead them into year one not just mathematically but pedagogically they get used to learning on the rug so they get used to that form of of accessing learning in a big group on the rug and that's also very important for year one um i could go on but ellie will probably shoot me so i'll shut up now but again if it's something people often ask about again it's not impossible that we could do a message or a letter on that subject yeah, and this probably follows on from that, Ruth. Ian's just asked, um, have you already identified problem areas in the leap from reception to year one? Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't identified. Does he mean mathematical areas? No. 
Um, pedagogic areas, yes, uh, we find that less fewer reception are doing using year one pedagogy. So they're not they tend not to be doing the on the rug sessions, um, the whole classwork, and that's a problem because then when they go into U one, they haven't got a, a background of having learned how to do that. I would regard reception as where you learn how to learn at school. That's one of the things you're doing in receptions. You're learning how to learn. And that's quite important. But the answer to his question is, no, I haven't really. I probably could sit down and do so, but I haven't. And then we've just got a clarification on one um, previous question. So just to clarify, the planning is linked directly to the previous EYFS framework. Sorry, so, no, it's not, no. Um, sorry, and I might not explain that bit clearly. Um, so it's um, it's got the new EYFS framework. Um, it says 2020 because it was uh, optional last year. So we put up the matching to the new framework last year. Um, so it says 2020, but no, it's the matching to the new framework that's in is there. That, I'm um, assuming you're going to change that, Ellie, because it is. Yes, 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 as well. Yes, we'll change that as well so that you'll see that update. Um, yeah, the change that we're also about to make is to drop in the new version of, of the matching, which has the development matters in there as well. Which I think is essential. So as soon as that, it got yeah. held up for, for internal reasons, but as soon as that's up there, I've been using it for quite a while because it's been on that's, my computer. Yeah. So that, you, definitely, you definitely need that. And it'll come this week, I believe, Ellie? Yeah, that will be there in the next few days under the um, curriculum matching documents on the reception area. Um, but as I said, if you need it straight away, then go into your latest news messages um, and you'll see a latest news in there with a link to it. Good. Yeah, and Evelyn's just asked the question, is it worth embedding metacognition at reception? Yes, definitely, yes. Because unless children start making choices about what to do um, and and so which skill to use then they 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 again they're not going to be able to cope in year one where that is so important so we need them not just to be able to parrot a skill but also a rehearse a skill but we need them to be able to make a choice and think oh i think i better count now or i think i better um i think i better see how many there are there or i think i better um turn that around reposition that those sorts of choices are very important in reception i think they're very important and they're very basic and children will almost do them you know if you put three things on one child's plate and four on another child they're going they're going to make that comparison without much encouragement really and uh, i think you know if you say how do you know they'll probably tell you i think that edging into metacognition is very important in in reception Do you have any Thank other you. We've got one final one. Um, so when you say the lessons haven't changed, you mean they have changed to fit the new curriculum, but the change happened last year. Is that correct? No, um, no, no this content's the same because Advocacy is so flexible. Um, the content's still there and it still covers everything you need for the new curriculum. Um, so what we've done is just provided some new matching documents showing you um, how the content um, uh, makes the links to the, the new curriculum and um, and development matters as well. Well, there's basically there's two things. There's the content, um, which has not changed, but there is the um, how. So there's what you teach and how you teach it. The how you teach it has definitely changed. The what you've got to teach hasn't changed. It's just that you will focus in a different way and your pedagogy will almost certainly be slightly different. I mean, that is up to the schools and how much they've changed is quite variable in my experience, but it is up to you how you use what the content is. Lovely. Okay, well, I think we've come to the end of our half an hour. So thank you so much for your time. And I hope that's been useful in showing you um, what there is in Abacus Reception and uh, the links we make to the, the new EYFS. So we'll be sending out uh, follow-up emails in the next few days uh, once we've got the recording ready for you. So I'll we'll have that um, and links to all the other things that we've talked about, including the PD. Uh, so that'll come either from the customer success team um, or from your local rep if you're outside the UK. Um, so thanks again for attending the webinar and um, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs>